This is our lecture number 17, and um, in this lecture we're going to finish discussion of uh, comparison of two populations. So um, this is going to be a relatively short lecture. Actually, I don't anticipate it to be very long. We're going to discuss how do we test uh, for population proportions. All right, without further ado, let's get started. So uh, everything that we discussed so far about comparing two populations revolved around calculations of the mean, right? And the mean uh, is only possible to compute when the data are numerical. So uh, in the previous couple of lectures, we discussed uh, two different possibilities. Uh, the data in two samples uh, could be collected as independent samples. So first I collect sample number one, and I set it aside, forget about that, and collect sample number two completely independently from sample number one, or data could be collected as uh, in a special, specially designed or pre-cooked way uh, in, in the experiment, right? And uh, in this case, uh, oftentimes what happens is uh, only first sample is random. Second sample is um, specifically selected. Every observation in sample number two matches with uh, exactly one observation in sample number one and there is certain ruler, certain criteria uh, how the observations are being matched. There should be something uh, similar uh, between them, right? It can be either the same person or the same store if we're discussing sales before and after advertising, etc., etc. So in these cases we could discuss calculations of the mean, mu, and uh, um, that's what we did in the previous couple of lectures. So what happens if your data is not numerical, if it's uh, categorical, either nominal or ordinal? In this case, as we discussed before, uh, the only thing that you can compute are proportions, right? Well, for uh, ordinal data, you also can compute the median. And actually, discussion about the uh, comparison of the two populations, when the mean does not make sense, but median might make sense, we're going to uh, leave that until the end of the semester uh, when we'll talk about uh, non-parametric statistics, okay? So, but for now, uh, let's concentrate on calculating calculating proportions. So, um, the, uh, the scenario is pretty simple. I have two different populations of data. I collect a bunch of responses from population number one. That would be my first sample. And the same thing I do with population number two, that would be my second sample. And I can calculate percentages of different proportions in sample one and sample two. And now I want to compare uh, how my true population proportion in the sample, in the population number one, P1, is different from true population proportion uh, in the population number two. So just like in the previous two lectures, everything that we will test is going to be not about P1 greater than P2 or less than P2 or not equal, but uh, it's going to be about the difference. Uh, P1, proportion from the population number one, oops, uh, minus the proportion, true proportion in the population number two. So uh, from that standpoint, this test is very similar to what we were doing already. Okay, so here is how the data are collected, as I was saying, right? Population one is um, uh, everything, anything and everything that we uh, uh, may want to know about certain subject matters, such as, for example, all people uh, living in the country, right? So one of the applications, for example, is um, change in the approval rating. I believe I discussed that example earlier, right? So, um, before the election and after the election, what happens with the approval rating, okay? So, how do we calculate the true approval rating? That would be percentage of people in the society who approve the actions of the, uh, of the president, okay? So, uh, in order for me to know precisely what the uh, approval rating before the elections, right, when the person is the candidate, um, I have to ask everybody, quite literally, and uh, ask them, okay, what do you think about his program going in, into the elections? Okay, do we approve, or does it not sound good to you? So that would be population, right? 
Same thing about population number two. After the person was elected into the office, I have to ask everybody, what do you think? And then I can calculate proportion of responses, yes, I approve. Now, obviously, that's not doable, right? So therefore, we settle for the sample. Samples can be relatively big. They can include thousands and thousands of observations, but that's still less than millions and millions of people living in the country, right? And uh, uh, in this case, uh, we don't have such thing as matched pairs versus independent samples. There's nothing to match, okay? Uh, it's not a numerical measure. Um, it's just a response, yes or no, kind of thing. So therefore, my sample sizes can be different, okay? I can get, for example, 2,000 people before the elections, ask them to approve, and uh, 3,000 people after the election. So sample sizes can be different. But the point here is that from each sample, we calculate uh, what we know already is a point estimate, right? It's a sample proportion, okay? Uh, whatever that is, I can be 100% sure that it's not going to be the actual true proportion P1 in the entire population. It's going to be maybe close, but different. Same applies for the population number two. So that's what I have, right? That's the only thing that I have, in fact. And based on these um, point estimates, P1 hat and P2 hat, I have to somehow drive the conclusion about what the difference between P1 minus P2 might be for the true population proportions. Okay. So uh, applications of this um, type of analysis, uh, there are plenty of them. Okay, marketing effectiveness. In fact, uh, this is actually the example that we're going to look at uh, in uh, in just a few minutes. Okay, so market share. Okay, uh, I redesign the product, or I advertise for the product, and I hope that my product will uh, sell better. Right, so it will outsell the competitors. So percentage of my sales for my product after the product redesign or after the advertising is going to be higher than percentage of sales for my product before uh, before the marketing, right? So I can compare market shares and see if my market share increased significantly compared to what it was before. In the operations, okay, in another field of the, uh, of the business, let's say uh, a manager wants to decide which, uh, which machine to buy for the production process. Uh, now, each machine is not perfect, and that's that's the reality of any production process so there are uh, always defective parts so when machine works let's say out of every thousand um, units that i manufacture a certain percentage is going to be defective okay and if i have a choice between machine a and machine b obviously i want to uh, go with the machine that gives me uh, lower percentage of defective items. So how do I do that? Well, same thing, right? I use machine one, and let's say I make 200 parts, test all of them, uh, calculate the proportion of defectives, right? And I use machine two, uh, again, make 200, 300, some number of parts, test all the parts, and calculate the proportion of defectives uh, for the machine number two. And now I have to compare. Uh, what's P1, true proportion of defectives manufactured by machine 1, compared to P2, true proportion of defectives manufactured by the machine number 2, right? Which one is lower? So that would be another example. Uh, political pollsters. Uh, so what we just discussed, right? Approval rating before and after the election. What do you think about his promises before he was elected? Versus, uh, do you still approve after the person was elected in the office and was uh, in the office for some time. Okay? Uh, pharmaceutical companies um, uh, use uh, a lot of times that... Uh, so first of all, let me uh, <laughs> kind of uh, step uh, a little bit uh, on the side here and uh, uh, kind of tell you that uh, how uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, come up with drugs and treatments is entirely based on statistics right now for example we're in the middle of the uh, coronavirus pandemic right so um, and companies are trying to see uh, if uh, um, for example uh, the drug let's say that company will come up with an antiviral drug right so antiviral means what it basically makes the symptoms 
uh, easier, right, and maybe reduces the, the mortality, okay? Uh, so let's say, for example, uh, uh, if we want to see if certain drug is effective, uh, then uh, what, what we need to do is uh, uh, collect uh, uh, two, two different groups, right? And that's how uh, drug trials are done uh, actually in the pharmaceutical industry, okay? There is always control group, so uh, people who do not receive any drug, right? And there is a treatment group, people who do receive the drug. So if we want to see if the drug was effective, uh, then what we need to do is um, one group uh, of people is given the placebo, what's called placebo. So in other words, it looks like a drug, uh, but it's not. So it's basically empty pill, right? And we're, we're seeing the percentage of recoveries, for example, from the illness in this group. And the uh, second group is receiving uh, the actual drug, which looks actually exactly the same like on the outside it looks exactly the same as group number one is is receiving and we're uh, trying to see what percentage of people recover in group number two and then after that we have to compare the percentages and what pharmaceutical companies are doing is they're running that kind of uh, testing in order to prove that percent of recoveries for the treatment group people who did receive the actual drug is statistically higher than the recoveries in the control group people who did not receive a drug but instead receive the empty pill, which is a placebo. And oftentimes, kind of another uh, element of this puzzle, oftentimes uh, uh, the companies are running something that's called double-blind randomized uh, test. So what does that mean? That means that uh, uh, how people are split between group number one that receives the drug and group number two that receives placebo is completely random. And double-blind means this. Uh, whoever is conducting the experiment uh, so people who administer the, the, the drugs, they don't know if they're administering the actual drug or uh, placebo. Okay, so they have no idea. Uh, somebody else knows, you know, who gets what, uh, who gets placebo and who gets the actual drug. But people who do the administration, they have no idea if they're giving a real drug or, or an empty pill placebo. Moreover, the patients themselves do not know if this is a real drug or placebo, okay? Uh, and that's called a double-blind, completely randomized trial. So this is a standard procedure for pharmaceutical companies and their drug testing. All right, anyhow, uh, let's move on. So let's move on to the example, right? A consumer package good company uh, is testing marketing for two versions of soap packaging. So what they did is, and this is, uh, uh, these are two lame pictures that I found on the internet. So they came up exactly same product, exactly same soap, but one is colorful and uh, you know cheerful, right? Attracts the attention, and another is just you know gray packaging, dull, dull design. So they came up with two versions, simple colors, dull colors versus bright colors. For the same exact product okay uh, so since the uh, colorful version requires uh, more sophisticated packaging right more expensive packaging it makes sense to start selling the uh, colorful version uh, only if the market share or true proportion of sales for the uh, brightly colored soap is greater than the market share true proportion of sales for the dull colored soap um, uh, so uh, the the first group will outsell, in, not in terms of numbers, but in terms of proportions, the second group, right? So if market share grabbed by the uh, uh, more visually appealing product is higher than the market share for the dull version of the same product, then we're going to start selling the uh, updated product with colorful, uh, very visually appealing packaging. Okay, so in order to test if this is the case, if this version of the soap will outsell the dull version of the soap, uh, what the company does is uh, it places uh, product, this product, the colorful product in certain supermarket number one and asks them, can you guys please keep track of all the sales? Each time when you sell a bar of soap to the customers, uh, record which bar did you sell? Is it our soap or is it somebody else's soap? Okay. And it does, uh, it does the same thing with the supermarket number two. It places 
um, ships them, you know, a bunch of boxes with this soap and says, can you uh, keep track of the sales, right? Was it sold our soap or somebody else's soap? And uh, the way how the observations are coded in the file are uh, like that. <coughs> when the bar is sold of our soap, we record literally our soap. But there are four uh, competing companies, A, B, C, and D. And uh, that's exactly also what happens, right? So let me show you the, the data. So here is my data, and the file is called soap sales. Uh, and here is how the file looks. This is CSV file. I'm going to make it bigger, all the uh, columns. So you can see that the first sale in the supermarket number one was for competitor C, C, A, B, uh, and then there was a bar of our soap, then competitor D, our soap again, right? For the DAO uh, version placed in the supermarket number two, C, then our, then A, then our, etc. And we can see at the end, right, there are 904 look like observations, right? So we recorded the same number of sales in both supermarket number one with bright soap and supermarket number two with dull soap. So my question is, will my uh, bright soap grab higher percentage of sales in supermarket number one compared to the percentage of sales in the supermarket number two, right? That's what I'm trying to find out. So let's formulate hypothesis, okay? Now again, uh, I'm not actually checking for normality, okay? And the reason, uh, if you remember in our previous couple of lectures, each time when we discussed um, hypothesis testing for mu1 minus mu2, we had to check for normality, right? When samples were independent, we required that both sample 1 and sample 2 are normal. When samples were matched pairs, we calculated an additional column, which is difference between matching observations in sample 1 minus sample 2 uh, and only that column was checked for normality. When I'm checking proportions, just like in this lecture, there is no such thing as normality, right? Normality requires uh, an ability to calculate the mean, the standard deviation. None of that is possible with proportions, right? Uh, nominal or ordinal data do not have such thing as mean or standard deviation. So therefore, the whole idea of normality simply does not exist. So uh, I do not have to check uh, for normality. Okay, uh, but let's actually switch our attention to the um, analysis flowchart. I told you that from now on, everything that we're going to do and we will learn a bunch of different hypothesis tests. Uh, this is going to be our map of the course, right? Our guiding, guiding tool. So, in this case, I'm comparing two populations, right? This is my starting point. Uh, well, because, you know, I have uh, records for the sales, for the soap sales from supermarket number one, bright colored version, and similar, second column, uh, records for the uh, soap sales from supermarket number two, that would be dull column, right? Data type, interval, ordinal, or nominal. Well, in my case, it is nominal, right? Uh, because uh, there is no ordering, right? Every time when supermarket sells a bar, it records, is it company A, B, C, D, or is it our soap? There is no ordering, really, okay? Number of categories. Well, uh, technically, I have more than uh, three categories, right? I have competitors A, B, C, D, and my soap. But actually, what I'm looking for is, was it was the sale done? Uh, was the sale of the bar uh, of our soap, or was it not? Right? I don't really care. There is no difference to me if it was not our sale. Was it company A, B, C, or D? Who cares, right? It's not ours. That's all that matters because I calculate percentage of our soap sales out of total, right? Without uh, looking at the breakdown uh, for the companies A, B, C, and D. So really, uh, uh, it boils down to me for two uh, in two proportions, right? Percentage of our sales versus percentage of somebody else's sales in each case, in each supermarket, right? So there are two proportions and I have to use uh, that guiding tool tells me. In this case, you have to use Z-test, we're going to do it with a function prop table, 
uh, we did that before actually when we looked at um, when we looked at uh, nominal data right testing the hypothesis about uh, proportion so we're going to use exactly same function the only difference is that uh, in case when we tested hypothesis for one population we supplied the function with number of responses and total number of uh, uh, so count of our response that we're looking for example all people who voted for Republican and total number of counts right like everybody who participated in the election regardless of who did they vote for uh, from that uh, only one percentage proportion was calculated here we have two proportions from population one and from population two so therefore we have to supply uh, the same function prop table with actually a couple of numbers right? count number of uh, our sales from supermarket one from supermarket two and also total sales in supermarket one and supermarket two okay but that's the only difference really okay so i'm going to use the z test right prop dot table function and here's what i'm uh trying to see right the original so let's go back to the uh to this file right so uh where is my question uh, since the first version um uh, of this soap so brightly colored version is more expensive it must outsell the design in other words market share p1 for the bright uh, color so must be greater than for the dull uh, looking soap right that's what needs to happen and that's exactly what i'm going to test so my alternative hypothesis remember what we're trying to investigate is becoming our alternative hypothesis right so my alternative hypothesis is this that proportion of our soap sales that would be my market share right for the brightly colored soap is going to be higher than the proportion or our soap sales for the market share my market share for the dull colored soap right so the bars of my uh, bright soap uh, will sell in higher percentage of cases than the uh, bars of my dull colored soap okay so essentially that says that market share for my soap bright colored is higher than market share for my broad uh, my soap uh, dull colored okay but since everything that we test must be recorded in form of p1 minus p2 or mu1 minus mu2 one number is higher than another number that means that the difference between them is positive right greater than zero so here's my null hypothesis proportion for the supermarket one hour soap minus proportion for supermarket two our soap must be greater than zero so now is uh, opposite of that percentage of brightly colored soap minus percentage of uh, dull colored soap is less than or equal to zero so that's what i'm testing okay so let's get to that uh, without further ado let's uh read the data first right so how do i call it soap sales right soap sales read the file as always uh, see data folder i believe it's called soap sales soap underscore sales dot cs let's see yes all right very good so now let's take a look at the structure of the file although i pretty much know i looked at the file already right in excel but let's uh, do that anyway soap sales so what does it say uh, it says that there are mm, two columns um, one column is called bright version another column is called dull version so two variables right uh, each supermarket has generated 904 data points right so and uh, these are the possibilities right each time when they sell a bar they record which company was that is it company C A um, B D or is it us okay so essentially I have five different categories but really I'm looking to calculate the proportion of responses our so all right so oh uh, let me actually go ahead and do that in an old-fashioned way okay so I'm going to say bright count okay bright counts so brightly colored right supermarket number one that would be the table function of uh, soap sales right version so uh, I can even look at that not that it's going to be 
any uh, informative for me, right counts, and here they are, right? Out of 904 sales, uh, competitors for competitor A was 244, competitor B 163 bars, and us, we were 180. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do sec uh, same thing for the dull color, right? So dull counts, it's a uh, table. Right, and that would be soap sales. Dollar sign my dial version. Okay. Um, so now let's take a look at the counts themselves. And there it is. Okay. Again, out of 904 observations, our soap was 142. So it's lower than for the uh, brightly colored, right? So therefore, probably I'm going to end up with higher percentages of sales, higher market share for the bright. So, right. Um, so for that, uh, let's go ahead and calculate the prop table, right? Uh, prop table, and I have to feed the table, have to send the table. If you remember the vector of counts, right? So bright counts. All right, and let's see. So my brightly colored version grabbed 19.91 percent of sales, close to 20 percent, right? That would be my market share out of all uh, bars of soap that supermarket one sold my brightly colored soap accounted for close to 20 percent of sales okay what about the other one so it's the dull count right okay so what do i see dull counts was responsible for about 15.7 percent of sales so i can see that the difference between them is actually more than four percent right Roughly speaking, 4.2%. 19.9 minus 15.71. 15.7, right? Um, that gives me about 4.2%, okay? But of course, the uh, so uh, on, on, the, uh, on the outside, on the face value of that, based on my point estimates, and these are the point estimates, right? This is my P hat, and this is my other P hat, right? Based on sample uh, proportions, I can see that my uh, brightly colored version of the product grabbed additional 4.2% of the market share. But of course that could be completely random, right? Because after all this is a sample, right? If I get another sample like that with 900 observations, it's going to be different, obviously, right? My bars will, will be selling in different numbers, right? Each time when I get a 900 uh, observation sample, and I calculate proportion of my sales out of total sales, it will change each time when I pick a different sample, right? So therefore, could it be simply by randomness, by accident, that the uh, brightly colored version of soap grabbed higher market share? So I have to uh, uh, test the hypothesis, right? If my hypothesis testing tells me that the p-value to see that difference, about 4.2% between the market shares, is not very likely in the case when uh, there is no difference, there is no true difference between the market shares, right? And I would have to reject the null hypothesis and say, yep, it looks like this uh, difference, 4.2%, is statistically significant. And it does indicate that brightly colored version of the soap outsells, grabs higher market share than the not so brightly colored version. Okay, so, and I told you that I'm going to. Um, um, use the same function right to test the hypothesis and uh, i'm using again z test for the p1 minus p2 proportion from population number one minus the proportion for the population number two so prop table oh test right prop test okay and uh i told you about 10 15 minutes ago that now that I'm testing two proportions, I have to actually supply um, two different uh, numbers, right? Counts for the sample number one and counts for the sample number two. Now, uh, let me actually go ahead and run uh, the function n rows. So let me call it sample size. Sample underscore size is number of rows n row for my data set, right? And that would be soap. Okay, so sales, and let me see what's in my sample size. Sample size, it'll be 904, yes, 
and it is 904. Okay, cool. So, thing number one that I have to provide is uh, the vector that consists of two numbers. Count of my soap, our soap sales for the population one and population two. Now, important thing to remember, and it goes the same, same rule as we used in the last two lectures. Okay, I recorded my null hypothesis and alternative in this way. Uh, market share of our soap for the bright version goes first minus market share for our soap dull version goes second and that should be the order how I feed the numbers to my function probe table probe test okay so here I'm gonna say a vector of uh, counts X is and because it's a vector I'm going to use the function C combine right we discussed that at the very beginning of this semester so I'm combining two things right so first uh, will be the count of my uh, soap for the bright version, right? And look at that. Here are the vectors, right? So uh, really, I'm looking at this vector, right? This vector right here. This vector I can see has five components, right? They're enumerated starting from the first one, which is component number one. One, two, three, four, five, right? So count of my soap is going to be the component of the vector bright counts number five. So I'm going to say here, right counts, component number 5. And that's going to be the number 180, quite literally. Well, here, if you don't believe me, let me show it to you, right? So I'm going to say, hey, R Studio, please show me right counts, component number 5. There's 180, right? Okay, so this is our so bright, right, count. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other one. And where is the other one? It's right uh, here, right? It's a dull count, the vector is called dull counts, and component number five, again, represents the cells of our soul. So here I'm gonna say dull count component number five, right? That's my first vector. And again, I'm holding the same exact order as before, right? As in my null and alternative hypothesis. Right comes first, dull comes next, okay? So that uh, counts. Okay, then I have to say out of how many observations, right? Total counts. So it's going to be exactly the same thing, a vector. So I have to use the function C combined, right? And sample sizes are the same. They don't have to be, but in this case it happens to be the same. So I'm going to say in the first uh, supermarket I had that many observations and same thing, sample size. That's how many observations I had in the second supermarket, okay? And um, um, prop test, actually, uh, it's capable of testing hypothesis where the number that you're comparing your difference against is zero, okay? So I could not find any documentation how this function, prop.test, performs the test if uh, that value, hypothesized value in your null and alternative is not zero, okay? That's kind of the downside of this function. I can compare it against, for example, 0 0.03 to, s to see if the difference in the market share exceeds 3%. Uh, uh, so I'm going to use zero, right, as the hypothesized difference. And uh, the other thing, as always, I have to specify what is the form of my alternative. So I'm going to have, have to say alternative. I believe it's great, right? Bright minus dull. Bright market share is higher, so difference is positive, right? So therefore, greater. Okay? And when I run this uh, line, here is the output, right? And on the output, I can see pr pretty much what we knew already, right? We calculated these percentages. So it calculates uh, percentages again. So proportion of my brightly colored soap sales, market share is 99.9. .9. Of dull colored soap is 15.7, right? But here's the p-value for my uh, hypothesis test, okay? So I'm gonna write it right here, p-value is 0 0.01147, okay? So, now I have to decide which hypothesis is, uh, um, uh, which hypothesis I believe. Do I have enough evidence to reject the null, or do I not, and the null stays? Well, what p-value do I have to, uh, what significance level do I have to use? Does my problem say anything? 
where is my problem here right no it just says uh, since the uh, colors version is more expensive market share must be greater that's it so nothing else uh, if nothing else is specified I'm inclined to use my default uh, value of the significance level and that would be 5% obviously p-value is less than 5% so what do I do reject now in favor of alternative okay and what does my alternative say well, let's check my alternative says uh, where is that here right my alternative says that the difference between brightly colored soap market share and the dull colored soap is positive in other words the market share for the bright soap was actually statistically higher than the market share for our dull old version of the soap right so to answer the question imposed in this problem will changing in the packaging of the product result in bigger market share yes statistically that is the case so this difference of about 4.2 that we saw from the samples is big enough for us to claim that this is not an accidental difference right it's not consistent with the assumption that market share did not change but market share stayed the same it's an indication so this difference 4.2 percent additional gain in the market share is big enough for us to claim that yes uh, new version of the soap does generate higher uh, market share okay and that's essentially the end of it okay this is how we test hypothesis in case when your data are ordinal or nominal and you're looking to compare certain percentages certain uh, proportion from population number one versus the population number two okay so that concludes our um, topic on um, comparing two populations right we covered pretty much all the grounds uh, well actually I'm lying okay we didn't cover all the grounds we will cover all the grounds by the end of the semester when we'll discuss something that's called non-parametric statistics but for now uh, we're going to abandon that topic and switch our attention so in the next lecture we're going to discuss what do we do uh, when we actually compare multiple proportions that can be calculated from um, a sample of data okay so i'm going to stop recording here and see you in the next lecture